we we got questions about you know why why on earth would you go to Russia when you could get you know world class care in North America, and the reason for that was because we had tried the Ashton protocol. We switching over to Valium. We tried the Ashton protocol, and lots of people have success with that. Although it sounds horrible, and um, lots of people don't have success and, with it. Yeah, I'm. I put out a the first family update we did was when you went to the first rehab center in the states, and after I put that out and said this is what's going on, uh, I had hundreds, if not thousands, of people respond, um, telling me how horrible benzodiazepine withdrawal could be. Um, how they couldn't work, how they were pacing around their backyards for a year. Um, and they basically said, just keep him alive. Make sure he stays yeah, well, alive. The, the psychiatrists that I spoke with said, you know, when I asked them how long the akathisia was likely to last, they said, well, it could be two years. And I thought, no one could live like this for two years. It's like, you can't live for two years if you're being constantly prodded with something excruciatingly painful on a moment to moment basis. It's just not, and there's no escape. There's no relief. That's just not possible. It wasn't possible. Or I, I mean, the reason I did survive certainly wasn't because I was enjoying my life. The reason was, is that I had family that I was very attached to and friends who went above and beyond the call of duty, helping to care for me. But the uh, experience was intolerably dreadful. And it's so strange. It was, we're now in Serbia, weirdly enough, in <laughs> Belgrade, of all bloody places. And we've been here about two weeks and went to yet another specialty clinic run by an anesthesiologist. And they modified the medication that I was taking in Florida, which is where we were last. And I don't know, I can't understand it, but virtually all my symptoms have disappeared. I'm still weak if I get up and walk around. I don't have my stamina, but I can think clearly. and I feel I'm back to my regular self, such as that is yeah. during the mornings and during the days. I can work. You know, it's very surprising to me that this happened so rapidly, but it it has, and that's why we're doing this podcast and yeah. or this 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 video. But uh, and hopefully it'll last. But and Tammy is coming. She's been. I haven't been with her for more than a few days since middle of December, and that was partly because I was in bad shape, and she wasn't in good enough shape to be patient with me. I mean, oh, Jesus, no, she she's had barely, a terrible time. She almost, she almost died like every day for yeah. six months, like you said. And you were in, you were suffering so much that anyone around you suffered. Yes, be, because of how horrible it was to watch. It was horrible. So just to back up a bit, um, you went to a hospital in Toronto, and they were going to make things worse rapidly. Um, they weren't willing because of your akathisia which was making you crazy they weren't willing to slow taper you down they just wanted to stabilize you by keeping the benzodiazepines there so andre and i found a clinic in russia that would actually put you to sleep using propofol so you wouldn't have to suffer while they took the benzodiazepines out and doing a detox or suffer as much oh at least you'd be unconscious for that period right. of time um and doing a detox on benzodiazepines isn't recommended you're supposed to do a slow taper, but your akathisia was so bad that even staying at the same dose right. was dangerous. Right. So we needed to get rid of that. So we spent time in Russia, managed to get it out, and it was horrible. Well, you guys took a big risk taking me out of the hospital in Toronto, which nobody recommended. The psychiatrists certainly weren't in favor of it. And taking me somewhere as foreign as Moscow and and then attempting this what generally unadvised treatment it was all surreal yeah it, but, was, it was terrifying and when I woke up so as I said too th that was complicated by the fact that I double I had developed pneumonia in both lungs 
But when I woke up, I was first catatonic and then delirious. I can remember the delirium that lasted a whole day, consisted of a sort of dreamlike hallucination that I had been kidnapped by. You were, you were delirious for nine days? Nine days? Yeah. Nine days. Mm. You remember the last, last day. day. Yeah, I remember that I was kidnapped by people, oddly enough, who lived in Florida. And <laughs> they were like very rural backwoods people. And Florida tree people. Florida tree people, yeah, and that they were going to, the, the leader of this little gang who kidnapped me were going to kill me because the leader was going to kill me because he, he wanted to impress his girlfriend. <laughs> and it was a very, very vivid dream that I had while I was awake. I knew I was in the hospital at the same time. I was just one of the, and I also remember that when I first woke up, I was irate because um, I had been, my hands had been secured to the side of the bed because apparently I was tearing out the IV tubes that I was connected to because I didn't want to be in the hospital. I had no idea why I was in the hospital or where the hospital yeah, was or where anybody I knew was. We had to back up a bit again. <laughs> um, we had agreed when you were in the hospital in Toronto like our whole family had sat down and agreed that the best option was this rapid detox in Moscow. And you'd been part of that discussion. Um, but when you woke up after the detox in Russia, you couldn't remember any of that. Right. I remember being really angry with you when you first showed up because there were very limited yeah, visiting there was, hours, but I didn't know that. It was this, oh man, it was so awful. It was... Um, we ended up in like the outskirts of Moscow in a clinic for severely ill people. Yeah. Uh, and it was like Soviet-esque guard, guarded. So the visiting hours were two hours from four yeah, to six. Yeah, and you six. guys were driving how far a day to come and visit? It was like two hours each way. Right, right. Which, and in, 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 in Moscow the winter. deep of winter, in, in rough traffic. <sighs> in bad weather yeah, to visit an ICU that was full of people who were in very rough shape, including me. Oh yeah. You fit right in when you first got there. And at first it was like how, Oh my God, we brought dad to Moscow and destroyed him. Well, that's what the doctor told you, wasn't it? The first yeah, one when of the we first, first got said to... that. Oh yeah. Um, and I couldn't even like, there was one day that was so bad. I couldn't go in. Um, and Andre went in and they said, you know, why are you here of all places in Russian? And Andre said, there was no one to help him in the West, which there wasn't. We looked everywhere. Right. And we tried two clinics and talked to multiple psychiatrists and none of them could help. Um, and she said, great, you've brought him here to die. So, and that was, you know, the scary thing about the hospital you were in in Toronto is you had pneumonia that wasn't picked up until we got to Moscow. So when you arrived in Moscow, you had a fever and pneumonia in both lungs. And so when they sedated you... Uh, and they, they intu intubated me as they well. They had to intubate you during the sedation because of the pneumonia. So we weren't getting care anywhere and getting off of benzodiazepines almost killed you. And the place in Russia managed to stabilize you but it was yeah to some degree like i didn't well, have you a, were, the akathisia was the much reduced yeah when the benzos were finally so they um they did some plasmapheresis as well to get rid of the benzodiazepines in your blood because the half-life of benzos are so long that even when you stop taking them of it the, takes of that particular kind particularly yeah, it takes a really long time for it to get out of your blood so one of the things they did when you were under was plasma phoresis to get rid of all the benzodiazepines. So when you woke up, the only good thing that had happened was you weren't taking benzodiazepines and you weren't akathisic. You right. were totally screwed, but you weren't akathisic. Right. Yes. And that, that was a great relief. And then we went, well, we went to a rehab center for a while in Moscow that was less medical and more physiotherapy yeah. oriented. And for a while I couldn't I couldn't type because I couldn't remember how to put my hands on the keyboard. I couldn't walk up and down stairs because I couldn't see the stairs properly. 
Um, I couldn't do up buttons. And one night I got up to use the washroom and then came back into the, my bedroom and I couldn't remember how to lay down. It, I tried for about 40 minutes. I couldn't remember the sequence of actions that would enable me to lay down. So this was probably two or three in the morning. I ended up calling for a nurse so that the nurse, who was a very helpful person, could come in and tell me how to lay down. So that was very strange, kind of cortical blindness. So I stayed in there for, what, two weeks? Mm -hmm. And then we went to Florida, where we thought it would be sunny and easier, easier to recover, which yeah, it might have been. But when I was in Florida, the, my anxiety levels were... I wasn't akathisic most of the time, but my anxiety levels were unbearably high. And that that finally got so bad that I had family members there who were taking care of me. You were there, of course, and Andre, but also my parents, my sister, some friends. Tammy came for a while. My son came for a while. But it got to the point where it was obvious that just the care of family members, no matter how well-intentioned, A, wouldn't be sufficient, and B, was just too much to ask of people. The, well, the responsibility yeah. was too great. And so that's when we, you, you and Andre had been communicating with the Serbian medical clinic for about six weeks, something like that. And they'd been quite helpful. Five months. Okay. Well, this is partly why we're doing this together <laughs> is because I don't know all the facts at, at hand. Yeah. But they were helpful. They were helpful. We, um, Andre managed to get in touch with uh, this clinic in Belgrade where it's not, at least people who, tr who are treating you, it's not run by a psychiatrist, it's run by an anesthesiologist, which seems to be how you need to be treated. Well, it's working for, it seems to be working for me at the present anyways, and that's the best we've got. And it's yeah. pretty good because I felt better. Probably I felt better. See, there are things about the benzodiazepines too that I didn't really understand until I began to decrease their use. I was very, I be, had become quite isolated from my family members. Yeah. I, it was no, most noticeable, I would say, in my relationship with my son. But it was like there was a barrier up between it, me and people. It was noticeable. It was noticeable. I thought, a lot, I th attributed that to the strange twists and turns my life had taken in the previous two or three years because there was no shortage of strangeness on that front. But, and then also I had a strange muscle weakness that plagued me. And I now realize in retrospect that that was all a consequence of benzodiazepine use. So using it, well, this is part of the reason we're doing this, this podcast or video as well, it's to let people know these are very widely prescribed drugs and they are not safe to take for more than two weeks or a month at the absolute maximum. And if you take them longer than that and you end up addicted, you're going to, or dependent, which means that you'll suffer withdrawal symptoms on their cessation, you are going to be one sorry person. Some people, you know, have a better time of it when they stop their use than others. But enough people have a terrible time so that it's an absolute, it's a, it's a medically induced epidemic. It's a complete bloody catastrophe. Yeah. It's probably worse than the opiate epidemic. And that's really saying something. So, and I don't know if I'm out of it or not. You know, I mean, I'm, I have a hard time believing how much better I feel than I did two weeks ago. It's, it's, it doesn't seem plausible. So, you know, it's possible that things will just deteriorate for me again. Although I wouldn't, I don't feel like that at the moment. I feel like things are put back together in an important way.